Okay. Just confirm if you can share, uh, if you can see my screen. Uh, yes, we can. All right. All right. Great. So, in, uh, good morning, everyone. So, in this webinar, uh, we are going. We'll go through a presentation, a reinvent presentation, basically, which tells you how you can create opportunities for Microsoft workload on AWS, and what are the services that are offered by AWS. Uh, for for running Microsoft workloads, we'll we'll have a look into that. So the agenda of this webinar will be to you know create market of opportunity for Microsoft workload, why you should go with AWS for Microsoft workload, uh, winning micro uh, migration opportunities, and you know winning modernization opportunities. We'll 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 cover through uh, these points in the uh, webinar. So let's get started. So these are yeah these are some of the uh, stats related to microsoft workload when we talk about microsoft workload at least 75% of the enterprise application are windows based right 70% sorry 70% of the enterprise application are windows based so that's a huge number right 82% of the windows application are still on premises so you know like Many of the uh, uh, Windows uh, application are still running on-prem where they cannot leverage uh, scalability and, and cloud-native features. So you can see the, the opportunity here. 50% uh, of the enterprise customers are planning to migrate to cloud within next 24 months. So that's again a big number. And when we talk about revenue, it's six billion dollar SQL Server on-premises opportunity to migrate to cloud in the next two years. That's a huge uh, revenue, by the way. Forty-three percent of the on-premise SQL uh, Windows servers are two thousand eight or older. So that there is, you can see there is an opportunity for upgrade also. And when you do an upgrade, uh, you know that uh, cloud offers you flexible licensing model for Windows, so you can take advantage of uh, AWS infrastructure. 91% of the enterprise customer have Windows Server SQL licensing. So they already have, uh, but they want to use their existing license on, on AWS, which is also supported, by the way. So you have a license portability uh, available from, from AWS, right? Microsoft is ending support, and uh, there are uh, some changes in the licensing terms also. So for example, 2008, SQL Server, it's no longer supported, right? There are licenses changes in October 2019, so you have to be aware of that. There are uh, changes for Windows licensing, OS licensing, and SQL Server licensing. So Microsoft US for Windows Server 2008 and 2002 is, as we discussed, like uh, is, it's already end of service for 2008 and 2008 R2. So it, you have to upgrade in order to get Microsoft support. Now, what does it mean for the enterprise? You know, uh, ensure the increasingly insecure cyber landscape. So, if you don't upgrade, that means you are vulnerable, right? Because you will not get patches and you will not be covered with Microsoft support. So, it's a good opportunity to upgrade uh, your infrastructure. Risk of non compliance with industry regulations. So, if you're following any industry standard like SOX, GDPR, HIPAA, or any other standard PCI DSS, let's say. So, so you are at the risk of non-compliance. So that's that's where you again have to make sure that you are running on a supported version of uh, Windows Server and SQL Server. And an increasing cost, Expen expensive, uh, you know, so expensive extended support and custom support agreement. So let's say if a product is end reaching end of support. So the best your best bet is to upgrade. Otherwise, you know, you have to get into custom support agreement, which can be very, very costly. And of course, there will be increase in the operation cost as well. Why AWS is the best place to migrate and modernize Microsoft workload? We'll see that in the coming slide. So why customers choose AWS for Microsoft workload? Basically, because of the experience. So it's 11 years almost now, 11 years of, you know, migrating uh, Windows workload. 
so global reach and high availability by by the way this number always you know keeps on changing and it will increase uh, at the time of recording it was 22 geographic regions and availability zone we have local zones also so this number has increased so uh, but you can see that when we talk about global reach and high availability you are covered this is a huge number so naws also follows security and compliance standard they are 89 compliance certification again it might have increased by the time uh, as of now but at the time of you know preparing this uh, slide it was 89 so there are 165 plus services in offering from aws and you have 80000 you can get up to 80000 iops per instance so performance can never be a challenge on aws so you need high performing machine high performing instances you are covered basically AWS host nearly two times as many Windows Server instances in the cloud as Microsoft. So when we talk about Azure, we have double the number of Windows Server. Even though Azure is a native uh, cloud platform for Windows, but still you can see the number people still prefer AWS when when they have to run Windows Server uh, as compared to Microsoft Azure. So some of the clients which are already on AWS and they are running Windows application, there are some some big names here, Airbus, Dow Jones. You, you can see Sabre. You can see McDonald's. A lot of them. A lot of them. When we talk about numbers, it's two times as many Windows Server instances in the cloud as Microsoft. So double, almost double. Right. And when we talk about reachability, so reachability, as you know, it begins with uh, global infrastructure. So AWS has a lot of regions and uh, there are upcoming regions as well. So for your information, I think Cape Town is live. So you have Cape Town region. Milan is also live. So it says announced, but they are all active now. You can use it. Spain and Jakarta will, will, will be launched very soon. So you see, when we talk about global reach, you are covered. So in each continent, we have an AWS region, right? So the closest to us will be, of course, Middle East, Bahrain. Uh, people can also use Mumbai region because there is low latency. Ireland, because of, you know, uh, availability of services. So in Ireland, almost, I would say almost 95% of the services are available in Ireland. So people do use Ireland region. Plus you get uh, medium latency, not very high, not very low, but your best bet would be Bahrain because it is the nearest region. So in 2008, the next largest cloud provider had almost seven times more downtimes than AWS. So when we talk about downtime and maintenance hours, so you see AWS clearly is a winner here because you, the other cloud provider, the next largest cloud provider had almost seven times more downtime hours uh, than AWS. I'm sure if you have used Azure, you might have noticed that some of the services uh, becomes unavailable all of a sudden. And when you raise a tag case, you'll come to know that there is an outage, right? But not the case with AWS. So here, if there is any planned, unplanned uh, maintenance going on, so let's say planned maintenance. So you'll get a notification first of all. So you can act based on that notification. If it and an unplanned outage is very very rare on, on AWS, right? So you can see the windows on AWS momentum. So back in, if we talk about the timeline back in 2008, uh, AWS announced support for SQL Server 2008 R2, .NET SDK. And from there on, you can see the number of services related to Windows infrastructure is increasing day by day. And the support related to uh, Windows uh, application and Windows services is increasing day by day. For example, you see back in, back in 2015 and 16 you get support for ec2 systems manager which integrates very well with uh, uh, with windows os and you can do automations you can run your documents you can run your uh, uh, remote script you can execute remote script using the systems manager very handy tool right and then uh, going forward in 2017 you can see hyper-v supports in aws sfs uh you have sessions manager you have x-ray for dotnet core for you know detailed uh investigation 
uh, you have dotnet you have support for dotnet developer hub sql server 2008 upgrade is supported amazon eks kubernetes for windows very few people will be having but aws have it manage uh, kubernetes cluster for windows infrastructure so you see in ev each and every year the number of services related to windows infrastructure is increasing right so it's not like where you where you have you know limited set of services you have broad array of services and you can choose the best services related to your requirement now we have uh, amazon fsx for windows file server so if you are looking for a shared drive for multiple windows instance shared storage for multiple windows instances you can use it F you can use fsx you can go with fsx if you're looking to set up your own file server on aws a managed one where you don't have to worry about backups and all so you can again use fsx for windows server so it's a windows native right for fully compatible windows file system experience supports smb for example you don't have to you know uh, you don't need any hardware or software to manage it's a managed service from aws so all you have to do is to create uh, your storage right to create your volume and then mount it to your target it supports up to 10 uh, G gb per second of throughput which is huge by the way tens of gps uh, per second throughput sorry so you can start with let's say 16 gb per second and you can go up to you know tens and hundreds of gbs per second so you can start with very small and you can grow very big whenever you need with sub milliseconds latency and it is secure uh, compliant including pci dss uh, iso and hipaa one more thing uh, i want to add it in this slide is uh, fsx is a managed service so backups uh is already you know uh, supported by aws so you can have automated backups also for F uh, with fsx now when we talk about uh, windows uh, infrastructure or a windows application active directory is a really key component as you would all know right so active directory basically you can you have multiple options when we talk about active directory services on aws so you can set up your own active directory on an ec2 instance you can use manage directory services from aws which is compatible with uh, microsoft ad you can go with simple active directory which is you know a miniature version of microsoft active directory um, which supports basic authentication so there are a lot of options here the key here is high compare High compatibility so only cloud to use actual active directory set up the directory in under two minutes so you can you can uh, create and you can set up your active directory really 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 quickly and since uh, we are talking about managed ad so you don't have to manage about uh, manage the underlying infrastructure or you know manage the replication settings it's all taken care by aws so you will you can directly consume the services which is provided by aws Managed AD, uh, managed AD preserves SSO experience on on-premises and in the cloud. So only cloud that preserves SSO. So, so your uh, single sign-on uh, settings and everything will be preserved on AWS. Users don't have to sign in uh, separately. So it's a single sign-on experience. So for example, if you're extending your directory structure, directory services from on-prem to cloud, you can get, uh, you can leverage services like AD Connect and you can extend your directory structure to aws and you'll get a seamless sso experience so you don't have to you know sign in separately for your cloud based directory and for on premises directory it's the same seamless experience now we have a rich set of features most of the features are of all managed active directory so things like uh, sites and services things like replication things like schema extension all these features are supported and we have broadest range of uh, ad aware application so if you talk about any application which requires uh, active directory integration we have support for we have we have it covered on aws now let's talk about idc white paper uh, the business value efficiency uh, the business value of eff efficiently running high performing windows workload in aws cloud it's it's of june 2019 
uh, I don't think we have a report for 2020, but you can we can still use it as our reference point. So when we talk about AWS cost, you can see uh, if we talk about previous environment, so you have to spend a big chunk of uh, cost on hardware, capex, and annual uh, cost. Uh, you have to spend cost on power facilities, right? And then uh, on your right hand side, you have uh, cost of running Windows infrastructure on AWS, right? So on the left hand side, you can see when you have to run everything on on premises, uh, you can see the number is really really high, right? Because you have to invest uh, on 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 your hardware, you have to invest on your powers and facilities, right? Moreover the resource cost is also not included. So you'll have people who will manage all those components, right? So it can be a significant cost, right? It could be as big as 7.5, uh, 7 million, uh, right? But when we talk about AWS, you you will get a lower TCO because all you have to worry about is your application, right? You don't have to worry about your hardware capex and annual cost and uh, annual maintenance contract nothing as such you just have to uh, worry about your application deployment application stack and of course uh, your aws consumption cost right that's so you can see you can get up to 37 percent cost saving when you run it on aws by the way uh, so this is a survey conducted by idc uh, in depth and interviews with 12 organizations that are running various windows workload including enterprise application workloads database workloads and custom application in the cloud uh, on on in, in in the aws cloud so on an average interviewed organization were large with basically like we are not talking so here we are not talking about small organization we are talking about enterprises with more than 28000 plus employees and almost 5 billion per year in revenue. So you can see we are talking about scale. So we are talking about enterprises. So the number is really, really high here. Right. The bottom line here is you can get a lot of saving when you run your infrastructure uh, on AWS because you have to, you don't have to make a huge investment on these power facilities, hardware and annual cost, right? And moreover, it improves your, uh, you know, uh, organizations, uh, uh, agility, I would say you you will you will introduce introduce agility in your IT team because you will focus more on your application, not on the hardware and not on the power facilities. I, I'm 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 pretty sure nobody likes to you know <laughs> spend time in troubleshooting power related issues. So you can truly focus on on core uh, IT services and IT requirement, right? Now let's talk about running SQL Server on AWS. What are the advantages? What we can get uh, by running SQL services on AWS, SQL Server on AWS? So SQL Server on AWS exhibited exhibited two times better price as well as performance than Azure. Right? It's not me who is saying it. It's a research done by ZK Research. Right? It's an entity who do research. So as per them, uh, you'll get two times better price and two times better performance than Azure. Right. First site, you can see that okay, uh, we are making a comparison with Azure. So, uh, cost-wise, you get uh, because it's a native Microsoft tool, so you may get some flexibility related to license. So, if you buy a Windows OS license, you may get some discount on uh, SQL Server. Leaving that part apart, li leaving that thing apart, if we talk about total performance and if we talk about total cost of ownership, that's where AWS scores. Where let's say even if we talk about small infrastructure so the cost can be really really you know significant and when we talk about large infrastructure you can see the cost here there's a huge difference so it, uh, aws versus azure large configuration uh, with tpm tpm modules if we talk about that again you know uh, if you can see the performance uh, that aws offers cannot be matched with azure Right, and moreover, when we add up, uh, when we add all those things with, uh, you know, uh, global infrastructure, when we talk about, you know, replicating it uh, to cloud, uh, and we talk about replicating the setup to uh, going multi-region, let's say, right? 
there's no match for AWS because you have tools where you can, you know, which you can use to become global and to deploy the configuration in multi regions within seconds. So if you want to read out this white paper, there's a link which I will, you know, I'll share with you. You can read out this research, uh, basically research papers from ZK Research. It's very interesting, by the way. Just have a check on that. Uh, let's talk about a few more features related to SQL Server. So database lift and shift choices for Windows workload. Let's say if you want to migrate uh, your setup really, really quickly and you want to do a lift and shift uh, uh, deployment for your Windows workload, what are your what are the available options? Well, the first one is to use, uh, is very obvious, by the way, is to run SQL Server on Amazon EC2. You will get a Windows virtual machine Windows with Windows OS, and there you will install and you will migrate your SQL Server, right? So it's a managed physical infrastructure. So underlying physical infrastructure will be managed by AWS. OS installation and scaling is also, you know, taken care by AWS. So you, but you will have OS level of control. So if you want to tweak any settings related to operating system, you can do that. And it comes with flexible licensing option. If you have uh, your own license, you can use it on EC2. If you want to get license from AWS, that is also supported on EC2. The second option is to deploy SQL Server on an RDS instance. By the way, RDS, if you don't know, it's a managed relational database services. Uh, it's a relational database services offered by uh, AWS, and it's a managed service from AWS. So you don't have to worry about operating system patching. You don't have to worry about SQL Server patching. All you will get is a connection, you know, endpoint, and using that endpoint, you can connect to your SQL Server. All right. So if you are, you know, uh, if you want to get started very, very quickly, you don't have to worry about, you know, SQL Server installation, custom installation, OS setting, uh, tweaking OS settings, and all. So RDS is a very good option for you, because here. Uh, you'll get managed physical infrastructure, OS installation, patching and scaling. Again, it's taken care by AWS. You'll have a managed database installation. So you don't have to install database on your own. It will be managed by AWS. Backups and high availability also can be managed by AWS. Right? Backups is, you just have to define your maintenance window and backups will be automated. Similarly, high availability, you have to select high availability option and underlying uh, and under the hood, it will be taken care by AWS. The important thing with RDS is, you know, you have, you there is no BYOL option here and there is no Linux support here, unfortunately, at the moment. So if you want to run SQL Server on Linux, uh, it's not supported at the moment. Or if you want to use your own license for RDS, currently it's not supported. So you have to go with EC2 option. But let's say if you want, it's a new deployment, if it's a greenfield deployment, you want to get started really, really quickly, and you just need a, a an endpoint to connect to your SQL Server, RDS is the best option for you in that case. Now let's talk about database modernization choice for Windows workload. Uh, you know that like you can run SQL Server on Linux also, now it's supported. So you, so those of you who are, you know, from Linux background will really enjoy to run SQL Server on, on Linux. So you'll get consistent uh, user experience, no changes to app, reduced cost of Windows licensing and support. So you don't have to go with Windows OS. You can go, uh, you can go and run SQL Server on Linux. That's also supported. Plus you have Amazon Aurora. So integration with cloud native services, significant reduction in TCO, DBA experience changes for better, right? So it, you can also extend your database schema to Aurora and take it one step further. And AWS has the broadest selection of purpose-built databases for your need. So relationship, uh, sorry, relational database, as we already saw, you, you have a, a SQL Server available so in, in in relational database by the way relational database is uh, you know it refers to referential uh, identity it supports asset transactions and schema on right you also can get key value uh, uh, database which requires key value uh, pair so if you if you want to store your entry in a key value pair you have 
databases supporting key value schema you have support for document db we have support for in memory database graphql if you talk about graphical database it's also supported time series database and ledger database so you see aws have you covered and by offering you the broadest selection of purpose built database that you would need right so when we talk about relational database you have options of running sql server sql server on rds right uh, sql server on ec2 when we talk about key value you have amazon dynamo db uh, which is very fast very high performing database when you talk about document uh, the, the use case for the document could be content management you know personalization mobile you have document db right in memory so you may have to cache few things right like leaderboard real time analytics caching so you have elastic cache graph uh, db for quick uh, you know visualization uh, fraud detection social networking recommendation engine so you have amazon neptune here time series you are covered with amazon time series a time stream uh, database type which is highly suited for iot application and when we talk about ledger uh, db so it's uh, for the system of record supply chain healthcare finance you can very well use amazon ql db so all these services are available you know so no, none of the area is untouched so you see aws has the broadest selection of purpose built databases for you need if you talk about other cloud providers you may get support for relational you may get support for let's say key value you may get support for document in memory but these areas like graph time series ledger very few services are available by the other cloud provider right that's where aws goes we talk we'll talk about data modernization tools here so uh, when we talk about data modernization a very handy services uh, service is aws dms uh, which is you know for migration predominantly but there is a feature in dms which is schema conversion so if you want to do a do a heterogeneous migration let's say from sql to uh, from oracle to let's say mysql that is also supported if you can use schema conversion tool which will automatically convert your schema into the required uh, target schema so for example sct converts your sql server schema to an open source engine or an aws native services like amazon aurora which will be really cost effective right uh, similarly with dms you can easily and securely migrate and or replicate your database and data warehouses to aws so very important services related to modernization now let's talk about dotnet development on aws right so the dotnet application life cycle starts here it starts with build then you deploy it and then you run it so uh, this is how modern application basically these are the life these are the stages in the modern application so when we talk about build building our to building our application so you have numbers of number of services that supports your build in infrastructure so you have aws lambda which supports dotnet core and powershell powershell tool of your choice by the way right so you can select the powershell version and powershell tools of of your choice basically and when we talk about devops you have a cloud development kit cdk for dotnet which is also available and you have pre configured ec2 amis for dotnet core application that is to run your infrastructure so you can deploy and run dotnet application in a faster way so you don't have to bake all your dotnet binaries and then you know create an image so it all configures pre it all comes in a pre configured manner so you can use uh, amazon ec2 amis for that dotnet core now if we talk about aws toolkit for visual studio this is how it will look like so if you are using visual studio if you have uh, visual studio available you can integrate aws toolkit with your uh vs license and with your vs toolkit and you can you know directly publish to aws from your vs of course it requires certain permission but it using that uh, tool using that toolkit you can directly publish your application to aws within a single click right so that's how easy it is
if you are a .NET developer, you will really enjoy it. But we'll talk about Microsoft licensing on AWS. Let's look into available licensing options. All right. So here is it. Flexible options for Microsoft licensing on AWS Cloud. So basically, you can bring your own license to AWS if you already have a SQL Server license, if you have a Windows license that's also supported. So all you need to do is, you know, just make sure that you are eligible for license mobility. If you are eligible for license mobility, uh, there's a program from Microsoft, right? And if you are eligible for license mobility, license portability program, there are certain conditions to it. You can then in that case, you can directly bring your own license to AWS. Otherwise, you can always go with flexible pay as you go model. So you pay for only what you use and you know, you can get your Windows Server license and SQL Server license directly from AWS. You can bring license to AWS without paying for the software assurance. So uh, you will not get software assurance here, but you know, it's possible to bring your license to AWS without, uh, without, you know, paying additionally for software assurance. You need to check uh, about the Microsoft licensing portability and you know Microsoft license uh, licensing program basically just to make sure that you are eligible to bring your own licenses because recently there is a change in terms from Microsoft. So just make sure that you know you can use your license to cloud. If you are able to use your existing license to cloud, then you can bring your own license and it will work. Now some of the <clears throat> Application requires uh, dedicated options, so your application should run dedicatedly on on a on a particular hardware, right? So you need physical code licensing in that case. Well, in AWS, you you do have dedicated host and dedicated instances, so you can pretty much use dedicated host option for your licensing requirement. That is also supported. And then you can report licensing usage. You can track your license usage consumption using AWS License Manager, right? So using License Manager, you can manage licenses across hybrid environment. Uh, you can you have flexibility to enforce license usage, leverage AWS services. You can check more uh, on on License Manager product page itself. You'll get a lot of detail. But in a nutshell, you, here you can track your uh, license consumption not only related to microsoft or windows but to any any software sorry you do get premier support for aws uh, customer running uh, for aws customers who are running microsoft workload so premier support is applicable right i'll not go in deep because you know it's pretty standard so when you take microsoft license you will do you do get support from aws now let's talk about migration opportunity. Uh, when we talk about migration, it has certain phases, right? Uh, so you do an assessment, you do uh, a pilot run, and then you do optimization, then you actually, uh, and then you do a modernization phase, enter the modernization phase. So assessment, mig migration, I would say pilot, and then migration final, then optimization, and then modernization. These are the phases uh, in a, in a, in a, in, in your migration journey. So Windows is at the heart of enterprise IT transformation. So everybody wants to transform their uh, Windows infrastructure, right? So it all starts here at the assessment. When when we do an assessment, you have number of services available from AWS, which will help you in, in doing an assessment and doing a sizing, basically. Some of them are, uh, services related to discovery service, application discovery services, uh, SMS, uh, TSO logic. These are some of the tools and services which is available. Then you have a migration opportunity uh, where you will actually do the migration. So here you can use uh, tools like migration assessment program, map program. So it's a set of questionnaire which you can uh, ask to your different business teams and based on that you can you will be able to see where are you and what improvement you have to do before doing an actual migration and we'll talk about actual migration 
you have number of tools you can do migration using cloud and your you can do migration using server migration services you can use dms for migration of databases number of services are available a uh, third phase is optimization and modernization is a fourth phase so here mnp program uh, is will be very very effective and you can use mnp program for your optimization and modernization requirement right so being an apn partner what are the opportunities uh, available at your disposal when we talk about windows workload let's let's try and understand so you can do advisory and consulting as a partner you can you can do a consulting for your customer you can run an advisory session for your customer uh you can also help your customer in migration and optimization right you can actually do a, a migration planning uh, phase you can run a migration you know assessment tools uh, you can run third party tools if you have right let's say if you want to use any kind of a third party tool for migration assessment or optimization you can do that and as a partner you can also uh, you know do a dot net application modernization if you are good in in the de de in development and you have a good team of developer you can always do dot net uh, app modernization and by modernization i mean not running dot net on core uh, you know windows os or you know running dot uh, net on core virtu on virtual machines or a physical server you can run dot net application on windows container you can go completely serverless on dot net application you run dot net functions whenever you use whenever you want to invoke any kind of a functionality right that is the modernization that we are talking about not so it's very confusing people think modernization is just an upgrade but it's not upgrade it's actually you know changing the way your dot net application will run so for example when we talk about modernization it could be running dot net on windows containers going completely serverless running functions um, include uh, you know involving devops practices microsoft workload these are the modernization standards uh, you as a partner you can also modernize off windows so you can uh, introduce containers dot net uh, core to uh, your windows application you can move from sql to amazon aurora that can also be a modernization paradigm and you can run sql on linux this is again modernization standard and then as an apn partner you can offer managed services for your customer right where you take care of complete infrastructure where you take care of complete database infrastructure from uh, for the customer you take care of all the devops practices security so see opportunities are are huge here so it starts uh, when we talk about uh, opportunity it starts from consulting you can be involved in migration you can be involved in application modernization modernize off windows manage services you name it and a lot of these areas are untapped so being an apn part partner there is a huge opportunity for you now let's talk about uh, the value of assessment for windows workload what value you'll get when you do an assessment so first of all customer uh, will you know will be in a situation where they might not know what they have in their environment what is running in their environment whether they need it or not so these are the question that will be answered during the assessment phase uh, you can optimize uh, license agreement right so that can be optimized you can identify everything in the environment right by running discovery services by running tools which discovers the whole uh, infrastructure for you now another question that you can answer you know is what will it cost to move to aws so you can do a tco calculation for your customer and this will really you know create an impact to the management that okay why don't we use cloud and why don't we save cost and why don't we get uh, why don't we become more agile right so you will be able to answer uh, and you will be able to determine the actual resource consumption you will be able to provide recommendation for optimized licensing so once you discover the infrastructure once you know what is running what is the uh, customer requirement then it becomes easy for us to provide uh, optimized licensing options right and then uh, one of the customer challenges is related to scope of opportunity right 
uh, what what uh, what will be the scope of opportunity whether you'll only do migration whether you'll only do you know lift and shift or you'll offer something else right so this can be a common challenge with the customer here you can you know uh, because since the data will be available within a week so you can really fine tune your uh, your scope and you can clearly mention that to the customer that this is what you can put and this is what you offer on the table right and if the customer is interested they might well go with your services right so some handy tools are available it's very important to make use of those tools these are especially handy when we're talking about migration use ola tool to analyze business impact so ola is another important tool which is available uh, which is offered by aws to analyze the business impact or to do you know kind of a risk assessment uh, thing so when we talk about ola you have tools such as tso logic uh, cloudomize and cloudcom so the popular one is tso logic and now it's native also to aws so you can run tso logic and you can do a final assessment what what is the current spending uh, and what would be the spending when you move to aws and if there is any potential you know uh, business impact that also can be identified so these are some value added tools which you can offer to your customer so the some examples are given here so i'll not go through all but let's go through one case study so tso logic scan for example large cruise ship industry leader this is one of the customers so here for them tso logic scanned 4817 server finding 9.9 .9 million in compute cost saving with three years ri for a total projected of 69 percent reduction in the compute cost so these are the these are the results which you can get when you run a proper ola tool right we expect such kind of results and finding using those tools to accelerate migration there are again number of services which is available so aws migration hub uh, it integrates very well with your migration services like uh, discovery services uh, like your service server migration services your cloud and your if you talk about so here you can get a single location to track the progress of the application migration across aws and your apin partner solution so it's a single dashboard it's a single pane view of all your migration progress and when we talk about actual migration services so we have discovery services we have some migration services database migration services cloud and your migration also i will add because now it's a native aws tool so you can use cloud and your migration and you can use schema conversion tool and by the way these tools are free of course so you don't have to pay anything for server migration service you don't have to pay anything for you know uh, discovery service or you don't have to pay anything for you know dms the only cost you will incur is you know <clears throat> when your infrastructure will run on aws similarly cloud and your migration uh, tool is free of cost you can migrate up to you know 10000 virtual machine for 3 months uh, 1000 virtual machine with one subscription if i'm correct and this can be extended also for within three months right and after three months i hope your migration project will be successful and then you can very well you know cut off uh, the tool subscription so there is no cost if you talk about migration tools similarly for data transfer you have s3 transfer acceleration file gateway snow, snowball direct connect etc etc so a lot of tools are available and not only aws native tool but you can also use third party tool of your choice these are there are wide variety of tools available in AWS marketplace and you can use it. I'll not go through all of these tools, uh, right? But you can check explore in marketplace. There are a number of tools. Uh, let's talk about Windows rapid migration program. So I'm not sure if it is applicable in our region, but there is a program for rapid migration. So it's basically related to the funding so if you have a very big environment if you want to migrate uh, the infrastructure you will be applicable for initial funding you can get funding directly from aws All right so let's say if you are migrating an infrastructure which may cost 100 
hundred dollar uh, in a month right so you will be applicable for funding if you want to do a pilot run or if you want to run a pilot setup you will be applicable for one month funding that's on the funding part by the way um, get in touch with us if you are if you have such kind of project and we will definitely help you uh, when when it when we talk about fundings now let's talk about modernizing the technology so what is application uh, what is windows app uh, my, uh, modernization and what we can do with uh, with windows uh, modernization what are the pathways how we should think uh, when we talk about modernization let's let's get into that so when we talk about current state how windows application run it's pretty much you know uh, it's pretty much like a uh, two tier application so where you have an op operating system you have a windows on prem uh, virtual machine you, you may run windows on aws or azure and you will have a underlying database sql server and then you have your dotnet application so it's pretty standard two tier application so when we talk about modernization there are pathways basically so you can go completely serverless you don't run anything on 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 an os but you write functions you write dotnet functions you can use linux container to run <coughs> uh, you can use linux container to run dotnet core right you can run dotnet core on linux you can run you can use amazon aurora instead of sql server or you can run sql server on linux these are some of the you know uh, modernization path we are talking about this will be the future state where, where you actually want to get into right so <clears throat> so aws proserve gsi center of excellence aws advanced this is this is for the advanced part by the way so some of the pathways are are as follows which we discussed so modernization modernizing windows workload to aws increases cloud maturity uh, it lowers the cost and enables new innovation capacity so for example if you want to uh, integrate uh, some of the uh, task definition of your linux containers and you want to put it into the dotnet core application now you can do that it's it will be possible with uh, when you run uh, dotnet core on linux so this is the future state that we are talking about now why do you want to modernize what is wrong with this architecture let's talk about uh, this two stack application two stack uh, two tier uh, architecture what is wrong with it why do you want to modernize well actually you know the major part the major reason for modernizing is to optimize cost right so you you'll you'll have a better saving you'll save more on the licensing part and you know you'll become more effective so you will only pay for what you run not only pay for what you use but pay for what you run on 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 lambda when we talk about functions so if you run one function you will incur the cost for that one function that's it and you can stop the licensing changes so if there is any change from a vendor or if there is any change of license from from microsoft you will not take a hit if you modernize right so everything would be with a commitment from aws that okay uh, let's say if you execute 1000 lambda function your charges will be fixed you will not take a hit on that part so you your dependency on microsoft licenses will be reduced you will become cloud native right uh, you can really accelerate innovation so you can go uh, and deploy application very very quickly you can test it out very very quickly if you modernize then there is improved experience and you know improved increased profitability of course if you optimize cost then profit profitability will increase uh, other thing would be you become more agile and then it becomes easy to troubleshoot that's i'm telling you based on my experience because if you have let's say 1000 lambda function uh, running you can easily troubleshoot which lambda function is not responding properly by looking into the dashboard or setting up proper alerts so it, it's easy to troubleshoot if you modernize whereas if you talk about uh, this architecture the two tier architecture if let's say you're having an issue with one of the services it becomes really hard to troubleshoot you have to check the logs you have to check the dotnet logs and then you have to find out what is wrong so it takes time it consumes time but here uh, since everything is decoupled so it's very easy to you know troubleshoot 
Um, this is again a modernization program. It is based on funding. So do let me know if you want to, you know, enroll in this modernization program, and we can help you with uh, fundings. Uh, and then we have some of at last in the in the end we have some customer references. Case studies are available uh, from AWS. So we have Thermo Fisher Scientific. The problem is they needed to uh, they needed development agility support new manufacturing lines from an unpredictable stream of acquisition. So what they did, they modernized their uh, ASP.NET application from on-premises. They shifted to .NET Core, they built with serverless and they deployed the application to Linux, not on Windows. So what happened after this? So the outcome is uh, they, wanted, they, they were able to reduce time to deploy their uh, core execution system, manufacturing execution system, to support new manufacturing line from acquisition by 80%. So 80% time reduction. And of course, if you go serverless, there will be there will be savings, right? Similarly, there are other case studies available. I'm not going through all the case studies. So Davinci again, it's a, it's a financial services based in Netherlands. These are open case studies, by the way. You can refer to those case studies. The challenges is in response to the customer demands for cloud-based services, Davinci sought to migrate its mission-critical Windows-based financial application to cloud. Now here, it's very interesting. See, in Netherlands, uh, as of now, I don't think we have an AWS region there. But it's a finance company, so they have mission-critical uh, application. Still, they moved to AWS because their, their compliance requirement allowed them to you know, store data uh, outside the country if it is secure right so of course you will have a lot of security around aws infrastructure you have to use encryption there are multiple ways to encrypt your data so you have to make use of those services so when somebody from finance or somebody from banking sector talks about you know compliance requirement you can give those references you can give those case study examples and you can tell that this is how uh, the customer or the the, the finance company based in in Netherlands uh, moved to AWS without storing their you know with, without storing their data in country, right? Because in Netherlands uh, uh, I I don't think we have a region in AWS region in Netherlands, so they might have stored data uh, nearby or they might have selected a nearby region to uh, you know uh, to uh, to run their application. Of course, security is a primary concern. So we will incorporate all kinds of security that your application requires. But the thing is, it's okay for financial services to store their data outside the country as long as it's secure, right? So this kind of on argument you can tackle with based on these case studies. Now, so what uh, they did, they did uh, a migration of SQL Server. They migrated the SQL Server based application stack to Amazon Aurora Postgres SQL. So the, the C, they, they did a, uh, a heterogeneous migration. So they moved from SQL Server to Postgres SQL. Uh, DaVinci now manages more than 250,000 loans for over uh, 44.7 million in assets. And it's closest software uh, and it's closest software suite on the AWS cloud. So clearly, they got advantage over their competitors. Uh, how they got it? Uh, by increasing the application performance, and they deployed application in days instead of months. So faster, you know, application rollout, update rollout, helped them, you know, to deploy the application very very quickly. I think these are some of the case studies, and uh, you know. Some roadmaps to success are also available. Let's let's check that. So for you to become successful AWS partner, uh, you have to build your technical competency. That's very important. You have to develop your service offering. You have to have a go-to-market plan, and you have to engage with AWS resources. You are, you can definitely get in touch with us where you we do the initial handholding for you. We enable you for uh, for all the use cases and you know for for all sales and technical training. And then we can even connect you to, you know, AWS uh, resources so that they can better advise you what strategy you should follow. You can also contact the Windows partner team for help. So if you're already a Microsoft partner, then it's okay. If you're not, 
uh, then you can get in touch with the with uh, with Microsoft, you know, team to better understand licensing support for Microsoft to obtain uh, Windows technical support in case if you need during the migration. After migration, Windows support will come from AWS, right? And then you can leverage uh, uh, partner programs, things like OLA program assessment using TSO Logic. Fundings are available for for Windows partner programs. We can discuss that. Now, then you can you can you also have a competency program, uh, APN Microsoft Competency. So, if you become Microsoft competent partner, you you are uh, you can get a lot of benefits basically in terms of uh, credits, in terms of funding, and in terms of you know uh, backend rebates which which we offer you. So there are certain requirements for AWS Microsoft competency. Uh, we can discuss that in some other day, but there are articles mentioned. Uh, there are links available, so you can check what you need to become Microsoft competent partner. And I think that's it from my side. Thank you. So I'll stop the presentation. Uh, that's it guys from my side. Uh, thank you very much for attending the webinar. I hope this was informative.